Uh, well, collectors, uh, here we are again. Uh, today is November the 22nd, 2022. And uh, most of you Americans know that it's Thanksgiving Day week. Uh, it's a holiday we celebrate every year. Uh, I think it's a nice tradition because it's a great excuse to, uh, to get the family uh, together as long as you're not fighting over politics or something with that grouchy old uncle that usually shows up but uh, for the most part it's a lot of fun and every family usually has a nice turkey. Uh, speaking of which I went to the supermarket today to get my free turkey and they told me I didn't spend enough so I had, didn't get a free turkey. Boy I'm telling you I don't, I don't know how that can be. I think I spent a couple hundred dollars a week on food but uh I don't know, what are you going to do, but that's the way it is. And, um, hmm. So, let's make a little toast to Thanksgiving. It's pretty early, but uh, you know me. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I like to start out with a strong one. But, anyhow, I, I also want to mention that, um, uh, we have we have a lot of um, uh, European viewers and uh, viewers from New Zealand, Australia, Philippines. I mean, just all over the world. And uh, I think when I do uh, these unboxings, uh, I tend to be uh, talking to um, I guess Americans because I'm from America. Uh, but I don't want you guys that don't live in America to feel slighted because we're all from the same community when it comes to collecting. There are no continents in collecting. Uh, you guys all know that, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, recently the, uh, the dollar has been very high uh, against the uh, pound and uh, the New Zealand dollar and, of course, the euro. And uh, it makes it kind of tough for you guys to, to buy anything in America because of the rate of exchange. But um, it seems to be getting a little bit better now. I, I think I saw this morning the pounds up to a, a dollar or the uh, euros up to a dollar three, which I remember when it was a dollar forty five. So um, it's close to the value of a dollar. And I think the pound now is up to about a dollar fifteen, but you know we've seen that at a dollar twenty-five, dollar thirty. But all those things um, uh, they happen over the years, and it'll it'll settle itself again. And um, and I don't know. I know it's uh, you think, oh boy, I'm paying too much for something that I bought in America. But then again, if you bought a really nice thing, uh, I don't think it matters too much. So anyhow, I. I also have a couple of uh, uh, people here, uh, um, a fella in England asked me to say hello to him, which I'm glad to. His name is uh, Peter Mason, and Peter lives in a place in England called Sog Hill Massey. Uh, <laughs> the, British, the British have the greatest names for these little towns, which probably, I guess, developed over hundreds of years. and. I don't know where Sog Hill Massey is, but it, it sounds like a good place, and I hope you have a couple of uh, decent pubs there. So here's to you, Peter. Mm -hmm. And then also another British friend, uh, a man named uh, Eugene Zaff, Z-A-P-H. Um, he wanted to let me know that um, he's going to start uh, a new show in England, or they don't call them shows there, they call them fairs. I mean, when we have a fair, we think of uh, America Rounds and uh, 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 shoot down the, uh, uh, the, the stuffed bears and things like that, but in England it's called a fair. Uh, but Eugene is going to start a new show, and he lives in Berkshire in England. And the show's going to be called the Royal Berkshire Military Fair. And it's going to be held in Workingham, Berkshire. And the show is on um, 
well, Sunday the 27th of November, so it's coming up, and I think he intends to run some uh, monthly shows, so I wish the uh, best to him. Uh, good luck to you, Eugene, and uh, I know there's a lot of little shows in England, but hey, if you have a good one, you can all of a sudden become a big show, so uh, best to you, Eugene. Okay, on that, and um, before we go into the unboxing, uh, uh, you guys might remember uh, last week, uh, one of the items that I opened up um, was a um, National Rifle Association cutlass, or shooting cutlass as we call them, uh, and it was this piece right here. And I was so thrilled about this piece because the grip was whole. There was no chips in it, there was no cracks in it, and I thought, wow, uh, what a wonderful item. Uh, uh, it's extremely rare to find a shooting cutlass grip uh, that's not cracked. Normally, this, this is an Alcozo cutlass, and I'll show you another Alcozo cutlass. Uh, and this grip, it has a crack right around the top there, uh, which is still pretty good because a lot of times they have chips and things like that. But um, I did not, I did not look at the uh, at the grip here because the piece was, uh, or the inside of the grip because the piece was looked so wonderful, and uh, a customer bought it immediately. So I. I think it was only here in my cellar for a half an hour, but we sent it out to the customer, and um, he sent it back, and uh, what he did, he took the, um, the grip off of this piece, I guess because he wanted to see what it looked like underneath. I should have done that myself, but I didn't. I mean, and you got to agree that these two grips look pretty, pretty much alike, just maybe age differences in the tone. So we take the, um, the pommel off of this, and all of a sudden you see that, um, wow, there's no wood inside of this grip. It's been nicely fitted, uh, but the grip is solid celluloid. So that's kind of a mystery. Um, I don't know that they made cellu solid celluloid uh, grips for rifle associations. Uh, I guess it's possible they may, uh, or it's possible that this grip is a reproduction. The piece itself is 100%. So Rob thought, well, let's, let's compare it uh, with another Alcozo piece. So we'll look at the grip. Uh, on this piece that has the crack in it and right away you'll see that there's wood inside see the celluloid goes around a carved wood base and that's how you would normally see them um, one other thing that's kind of uh, interesting too whether it's a telltale sign I don't know uh, but the original grip here uh, the one we don't know about here, uh, you can see there is a difference in the bulk of the size of the crossed rifles. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, you could say, well, it's just a different run of the rifles, but, uh, but the original grip seems to have um, uh, rifles that have more substance to them than this grip, which is possibly not original. So there we are. Um, these are the things that can um, can happen to you, uh, and it's why you have to um, it's why you have to always um, uh, look at things where you can. Get this back on here. That's the original. Put the top on. I don't want to make the crack any worse than it is, but but sometimes it pays to look, even though you. Uh, you wouldn't even think to look because everything looks so great and uh, here old Whitman got fooled so that's the way it goes sometimes and um, the collector that bought this said that uh, these kind of grips 
that are solid uh, plastic or celluloid, whatever they are, are available on the internet. So I guess that's probably the, um, the vintage of this particular piece. So in order to make this grip right, I'll have to look for an original grip, which is going to be a, a very tough uh, job, I would think, especially one that's in decent condition. But, uh, but what are you going to do? Uh, like I say in this hobby, um, there's not a day that goes by that, uh, that I don't learn something. And I've been doing this a long time. So uh, it's always good to stay a little humble and uh, not question everything. I mean, you don't want to walk around, oh, there, there. that's no good either. But uh, just kind of use your, your head a little bit and, and uh, look at what you're doing. Like this man I sent it to, he did. And I'm glad that he brought it to my attention. So there we go. That's a little lesson on uh, on shooting cutlasses. By the way, they all have these etched blades, and um, and they always have this spot here on them where they where they um, uh, buff them yeah. oppositely. I never knew why, but uh, well, there's no doubt the piece is good. I think that the uh, somewhere along the line that grip got disintegrated, and uh, yeah. And they replaced it with a filler. Yeah, this is this is exactly right. Yeah. Um, I think they're the yeah they're the same uh, same vintage also. They've got the 37 through 39 uh, trademark on them. So, anywho, guys, we'll go on now so with the. You're uh, missing a buffer on yours. Oh, you're right. Okay, collectors, we're all set to go here. Got my trusty Bob Burns cutter. And we'll get started on our first package here. See what we got. Oh. Looks like an easy item to get get to here. Got a couple of plastic bags that we can't get in New Jersey anymore. They're against the law. Oh, it looks like more than a couple. Oh, and the, and yeah, the please send, not in please the send us plastic bags if you yeah. have them, please. <laughs> no, don't send us any plastic bags. Oh, they're very convenient. Yeah. We'll do without them. Got to help nature, you know. We're saving the planet oh, here. Oh, yeah, we're going to save the planet. Yeah, I think I'm going to have my 61 Corvette converted to electric. <laughs> Take those two fours <laughs> off and, and get those horrible dual exhaust pipes yeah. off there. I mean... Just can't have that anymore. Well, I think if you lived in California, you wouldn't have a chance. You wouldn't, no. have, you wouldn't have a choice. Yeah. And it makes so much noise that yeah. car when you start that motor. Who wants to hear that tremendous rumbling of that V8? Oh, music to my ears. Oh, well. Here we go, guys. Let's see what's in here. This wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be to get to. Oh, it's still not bad. Let's see, this is glaring out at me. So we'll take a look at this. We, looks to me like a uh, first class cased iron cross. Wow, look at the condition of that box, guys. And it's got the image of the metal on the, on the front of it. That piano kind of hinge on the back, just like you want to see. And, and that's a steel push which is good to see too. Gotta watch out for those brass ones. Wow and look at that. Yeah that is a that's a nice uh, that's a real nice metal. See the nice slot it's not all worn to death like a lot of them are. This cross was not used much at all. Wow Nice uh, Coke bottle pin with a barrel hinge, and uh, uh, it looks like that baby is marked, too. Uh, I don't know whether Robbie can see that with the camera, but it looks like it is. I can see it, but I can't really tell what it is. Maybe an L3? Is that, does that sound right? No, I don't know. But uh, 
We'll see when the camera comes out. That usually has better eyes than me or you. Let me see it. Although, don't mess it up. Yeah, it's an L. That's... Okay. Got her? I think so. I think it's an L6. Does that make sense? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It looks like a nice, uh, really a nice uh, set there. Usually the boxes are, you know, at least worn on no, the corner. A, uh, that's a really nice, it's in good shape. It looks like it's all, uh, it's not something somebody put an iron, another iron cross in a different box or whatever. It looks like it's all been that way. And now we got some, some tissue here, a little tape. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, I just love it when people send me Hitler Youth knives. You just can't keep them in stock anymore. They're so popular. And this is a nice one too. They're just a tiny bit of wear where the leather strap was on the plating. But nice grip plate. Wow, beautiful blade. Real nice plain blade. No motto, but the blade is terrific. It's never, never had a bunch of short. It has a little sharpening, but hardly any. And uh, let's see, uh, uh, it's a Rob Müller RZM M732, it looks like to me. That's yeah. a pretty rare one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't remember seeing that one much. And the scabbard is, uh, is really, really nice. The reverse is just about full mint, and the leather is, uh, is great too. Uh, so that's a, uh, a very, very collectible piece there. Somebody will love that. So that's a good thing. And let's see what else we got here. Looks like a, a variety of... Uh, oh, that's the man's bill. <laughs> they never forget to put that one in. Well, we got a little pennant here. And uh, this looks like a small, um, a small flag. Um, it's an ID flag. Uh, yeah, it's a vehicle ID flag. You can tell that immediately, collectors, when you see the grommets. That was for tying the flag over a vehicle, and it's it looks like it's in very nice, uh, very nice condition here. Uh, you guys know what they look like, so I won't won't show it to you. So that's uh, that's some nice uh, nice things. You like that stuff, Bob? Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that. Uh, a nice little little package there. I like it a lot. And we'll move on to the next item. Easy here. to handle. Huh? Easy to handle that Easy stuff. Easy to handle, it, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take too long to record either. Do you want me to save these bags? Yes. Alright, I'll do that. Okay, that's uh it's number one, let's see what's next. Well, this box is a little bit heavy, so there might be something good in there. We shall see. Mm. Wow, there's something good in here, I'll tell you that. So we shall see here. Cutter's working good today so far, I think. Yeah, we're moving along all right. bubble paper little good padding there Let's 
some more plastic bags for you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's see what's in here. Huh? This man did a very nice packing job, I'll say that. Aha, I see what we have here, collectors. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that one's mint, too. Boy, that is really nice. Well, guys, this is obviously a, um, a WKC Mira calendar which WKC used for advertising. They probably gave these out to their customers and so forth. And uh, they have the, uh, you can change the date here on them if you want and all that stuff. It shows a couple of really nice uh, swords and a, and a bayonet with the WKC logo. Uh, and it's rare to see one where the, um, the mirror is so good. Uh, usually they're flaked or whatever. So, uh, so that's a that's a very nice uh, item here, and what a great thing to uh, to put on your desk, you know, and uh, just terrific. And uh, it looks like we have another one here. I guess I'll show you that one too. Let's see how that one looks. I can't imagine it's better than the last one. That that one is about the best I've seen so far, condition-wise. Wow, this one's nice too. Look at there, collectors. Just a little bit of age on the edges here, but uh, otherwise this one's in perfect condition. I remember, oh, maybe 30, 35 years ago, uh, Tom Johnson found a whole box of these that were never opened in Soligan, and uh, he sold them over the years to collectors. They were all in uh, choice condition, and I wouldn't doubt that uh, that these may uh, come from that uh, original Tom Johnson hoard. All right, collectors, here we go. Got another big box. It feels pretty light, though. I don't know what could be in here, but we'll see. Up. It looks like the dreaded popcorn. Oh boy, there we go. Let's see if we can get whatever's inside here out without popcorn all over. Oh, there goes some of it on the floor. That's all that's in here, guys. Oh, we did that without making a big mess. That's a first. Well, we'll see here. It looks like our, our package is inside of the... Oh, I, no, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, well. It's not too bad, though. You ever notice the popcorn sticks to you by static electricity? Uh, here we go, we got it all over the place here. Even though I thought I didn't get any on the table, it's still here. You can't win with this popcorn. Get out of here! Go bother somebody else! See what we got here. Well, this man took great care in, in packaging, which we always appreciate. Uh, 
he did a good job despite the the popcorn uh, uh, that is a good packing material and it really does save a lot of a lot of things from from getting wrecked so I shouldn't be so critical of it but uh, it does make a hell of a mess what are you going to do I don't know, looks like we've got layers and layers here, guys. Well, we're getting there, though. Yeah, slowly but surely. Bear with me. Well, I need another drink to get this baby opened. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I guess we'll have to get on the edge here. Ah, oh, good. I always like to see a Whitman bag. That's a sign of a collector that knows what he's doing. Let's see here. Oh my, yeah, here we go. Wow. Wow, this is really nice. Yeah, I like this, guys. I think you'll like it too. Look at that beautiful chained SS with a knot on it. And real dark chain. Wow. It's a Type 1 with a belt loop. Beautiful anodized scabbard. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? The knot is really tied well. And I like that it's a little complicated in the back there. And the fittings haven't been cleaned. They just have a real nice dull patina. The grip is perfect. I don't see a flaw in that grip. Let's see. Oh boy. And then a nice uh, mint blade with the SS motto. Yeah, this is a um, no maker. Yeah, this is really a, um, a first rate uh, chained SS dagger. Wow. Yeah, I like that. You collectors like that piece? That's one you can keep for a lifetime and enjoy it every day. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I like that a lot. What do you think, Ob? That's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really a pretty dagger. <clears throat> yeah, you're not going to get much better than that one. No. Well, there we are, guys. That was worth uh, worth all that uh, bubble paper and uh, popcorn and everything else. And, Oh, that's, I'm very happy to, to get this piece. That's, that's very nice. Well, with that, collectors, um, uh, we only had three packages come in this week. I guess maybe it's because of the uh, holiday or whatever. But I thought what I would do is I knew we'd have a little extra time here. Uh, like I've done in the past, I thought I would show you some things from my um, personal collection. Just a few things, so I hope you don't mind taking the time and take a look. This first piece, i lay the hangers down here. And what you're looking at there, guys, uh, is a complete mint slant gripped army dagger uh, with all brass fittings uh, produced by WKC. It has the very early WKC eagle on the cross guard and an early brass pommel. Um, but what's really extraordinary about it, I mean and of course the, uh, the slant grip, uh, just look at the condition 
uh, of the scabbard. The, the frosting is still throughout the scabbard um, on both sides. There's frosting that's visible on the cross guard and also on the, um, the pommel. Um, and just think of it how rare it is, number one, to find a, um, uh, an all brass piece this early uh, and in basically uh, unused condition. I mean, it's just, just fabulous. And I'll show you the blade on it. It's just a, a absolute full, full mint blade with all the cross grain, beautiful surfaces. And uh, then on the reverse, the, uh, the WKC trademark. And see the frosting on the back of the cross guard. So, is this an army dagger? Uh, it is, of course, but it's really a special army dagger because it took me years and years and years uh, to find one uh, this early and in this condition. And uh, also, it's so early that WKC used two screws in the throat on these real early pieces. Then they went to the one screw later, and of course they changed the cross guard uh, to the guard with the hatchet beak on it, on the eagle. Um, beautiful grip too. Look at that orange tone and uh, just a, um, I think it's a great dagger and the, the hangers that I have with it are in um, beautiful mint condition uh, with a little uh, belt loop rigging that's nice and the reverse are just perfect, show no wear at all. So that's, uh, that's kind of a nice piece something that uh, to me it's so cool it's not an army dagger anymore it's different you know what I mean I mean it's silly but you know what I mean all right and next I'll, I'll show you uh, what I think is a cool piece is the hangers and uh, this is the uh, the so-called first model railway now I've told you before there's no such thing as a first model railway uh, that's not there's no catalog that lists a first model railway uh, and in the Icorn catalog for instance they uh, they list what we call the second model as the railway leader that was the only railway dagger that they made and and there's no such thing as a first model um, railway however uh, I've told you this stuff before, but you may not mind listening to it again. Uh, apparently a sharp salesman walked into the Robert Class firm and uh, he had a bunch of um, black celluloid and um, Class decided to buy the celluloid and make army grips out of it. And it was black and they painted them white. And when these daggers were first issued, they had white painted grips and over the years the white paint is worn off or collectors took it off. And so we find the, uh, the black grip. These grips are also just a hair longer than a normal army grip and they have a distinct appearance to them also. Uh, this dagger, like most of them you see, they have a generic A or generic B um, hilt mounts. And uh, I just put this uh, Porta P on. I know it's a Luftwaffe Porta P, but uh, but this isn't a railway dagger anyhow. So what kind of Porta P was worn? You know, just an army dagger. But I like this one because it has the uh, uh, the gold V weave in the stem. And then what you see on on most uh, class first model um, railway daggers is um, scabbard bands that have the asterisk cut into, this was the part where the casting was, so they covered the casting flaw with that uh, little asterisk. So not all class daggers have that, but uh, I would say 75% of them do. And then it has a nice um, beautiful blade, which is nickel plated as class would do. 
beautiful mint blade and it um, it has the class marking on the uh, Ricasso um, and I did look at this years ago I took it apart and the blade has the hole in it like I show you showed you before with class blades they use that hole to put a piece of wire through so they could dangle the blade into the plating tank but I what I did with this dagger that uh, uh, even though there's no such thing as a first model railway, I mean it is a legitimate <coughs> variation, but uh, I got a set of hangers here and um, you, you say, well, they're, uh, they're army hangers, aren't they? And uh, they got uh, beautiful um, uh, leather tabs to hold the, the straps and I have a nice belt loop that matches. But the reason I put these hangers with the dagger is because you're going to see right now they have a black leather back on them. And <laughs> I never heard of a set of army hangers with black leather backing but these are absolutely original and I thought well what better combination for a first model railway uh, and I think they really look, uh, look good together and uh, I hope you guys like it too. Uh, so that's the piece that I've kept in my collection for many years, and uh, and you can see too the the uh, silhouette of the of the cross guard is still on the silvering of the scabbard, and so I think that's kind of a kind of a cool cool dagger. Like I say, they are a legitimate variation. They absolutely existed, but they're not railway daggers. Okay, enough on that. Now this next piece, it's a um, army dagger of course, but one of the, one of the reasons that I have it in my collection um, is because I, I bought this dagger about 1976 and you'll see it has a beautiful beautiful Damascus blade. This is not a fake blade that you buy through Red Ick or on the internet. Uh, this is an original hand forged Damascus blade. It does not have a maker mark on it uh, but it is original uh, and I know because they weren't making these fake blades back when I bought this and the way the blade is fitted to everything I can see it was completely made in this basis so I like this dagger a lot and have kept it in my collection all these years see how that Damascus really jumps out at you it's really quite beautiful I like it a lot I think blades like this were probably made by um, uh, trade school students and that's why they're they're not marked so there we go an original piece there next I'll show you something that uh, I like a lot too you say ah it's a uh, it's a short police clamshell well that it is uh, you notice too that the um, the pommel has a little sharper look to it than most um, police bayonets, and it has a, um, a push button for the uh, for the release in the rifle slot. Um, when you see this type of eagle, that was um, a pack-made bayonet. That's the style they used. It's a little different from others, uh, but what's really incredible about this piece, when you take the blade out, da da. It has the SS motto that's um, gilded in the in the backgrounds. Very very beautiful, and um, there are two or three of these uh, in collections also like mine. Uh, but I think it's a really a wonderful wonderful piece, and it's not marked pack in the back. It's just marked with um, Zoligan, uh, but I'm sure that it's a uh, a pack dagger and the blade is still in absolute mint condition. So that's kind of a nice thing. I'll leave that out if you, want to, if you guys want to look at it at all. It's kind of nice. 
And then <clears throat> this I think is uh, is about as good as you're ever going to see if you're a Hitler Youth guy. Um, this is a uh, just an absolute uh, beautiful uh, full mint unissued uh, Hitler Youth knife with the motto. Uh, it's not the earliest version because it has a Ricasso, but it has beautiful grip plates, uh, absolutely perfect hilt plating, uh, and it's made by the WKC firm, as you can see there, and it also has their RZM and a 1937 date. And the scabbard that goes with it is absolutely brand new, mint, beautiful uh, original paint, uh, beautiful leather, and the leather is uh, the strap that has those oak leaves on the back with uh, LS, I think they are, something like, yeah, LS. Uh, actually, there's a, there's a letter in the middle, it's L-E-S, which was the initials of the producer that, um, that made the leather. And then along with this, uh, I have the original issue sack uh, from WKC, number 70, that was their stock number for um, Hitler Youth Daggers. Uh, and it's, um, it just uh, is really a, um, a wonderful um, combination, uh, something that I'll, I'll keep the rest of my life, however long that is. And uh, there you go, that's a, that's a nice thing. Especially in the Hitler Youth Knives you see today, <laughs> there's very few that are, that are really nice. But the fine one that's still brand new with the bag, and I just don't think it gets any better. And I'll show you one more thing. Uh, this is something that I really like a lot. Um, this is a, um, a thermometer, and if you look at it, it's, it's uh, really, really heavy. It's all solid silver, and it features the, um, the stag uh, hunting insignia with the cross in between the, the starburst. And then there's, um, there's beautiful um, decorations in the, um, in the silvering. Here's a standard here and a, a hunting rifle. And look at that cutlass that's right there, the detail of it, right in the silver and hunting bags and so forth. And what's interesting, the thermometer still works, which it says it's um, about 69, 70 degrees in here. Is that about right, Ob? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Um, but you say, okay, that's yeah, a nice uh, hunting thermometer, but uh, so what? Okay, guys. Uh, this is tremendous. Uh, there's a, um, a very long dedication on the reverse of this. And at the top uh, is the coat of arms of England. And below that, it's in English, it says the British Embassy Berlin W-8. And then below that, there's a dedication. It says to General Oberst Goering with gratitude and then beneath that for the hunting party Romanton. Romanton was the hunting lodge that used to be uh, owned by the Kaiser that uh, Goring used very often. For the hunting party Romanton on 3-4 October 1937 from His Excellency Sir Neville Henderson and then it, beneath that, His British Majesty's Ambassador, Germany. Now you guys that are into hunting forestry, I guess you know that um, Neville Henderson was a good friend of Hermann Goering's and went on many hunts with Goering. And we see him pictured uh, with Goering many times, so they were, um, they were good friends. So. Apparently, Henderson had such a great time at the, the hunting trip at, to Romant, and who wouldn't? Can you imagine what something like that was like? Uh, that he felt he wanted to uh, uh, say thanks to Herman uh, with this beautiful thermometer. 
So this is something I've had for, oh, I guess 40 or 50 years, and uh, I love it very, very much, and I, I think it's a, um, it's a tremendous artifact, uh, and if you like hunting things, uh, what could go better than a thermometer presented to Hermann Goering? Uh, it's also interesting, too, that he uses Goering's rank as General Oberst, uh, which in October 1937, uh, Goering was still a general in the Luftwaffe and hadn't yet been promoted to uh, Field Marshal, uh, which I believe was in 1938. Uh, so it's just kind of got everything about it and uh, never been cleaned. The only collection that's ever been in is mine, and it's been in my bedroom all these days. I say goodnight to it when I uh, get into the sack. So, okay, I think uh, that's all I have to, uh, uh, to talk about on this um, Thanksgiving week. Uh, so I hope all you guys uh, get with your family on Thursday, and uh, I know you Europeans and... Uh, New Zealanders, so forth, don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but uh, we're all going to have a, a good time uh, this Thursday in America. Uh, so with that, uh, thanks again for watching, and if I can help you with anything, uh, please let me know. Be my pleasure.